Hello Ratbags, it's Jade. Welcome to a special guide today for Grounded. I'm going to be giving you some Grounded tips how you can get the most out of a 30 minute beta demo that's live at the moment on Steam and on the Xbox Insider program. That's the only way you can get access to it. It's only running for a few days so you're going to be replaying the demo quite a lot as you only get one day in the world of Grounded. So here's some top tips to get you started, get quicker stuff going so you can explore as much of the game as possible ahead of its full release in July. If you like survival games make sure you've got me subscribed make sure you've got the notification bell to keep up to date with daily news about survival games and let's crack on with everything i've learned in a very few short hours playing grounded i'll be coming back with more guides and gameplay videos very soon and if you've got any top tips make sure you put them in the comment section down below let's go it's grounded the analyzer is how you're going to unlock future recipes. You simply put an item inside and you normally get free charges. You then have to wait a number of minutes before you can actually research the next item. You can put all sorts of things in here. Once you've researched free items, you'll then have to wait an amount of time. But you can go ahead and go back to it a few minutes later and you'll be able to at least research one item. You don't have to wait until it's fully charged or free. Also, as well as raw items you find, don't forget to scan items you've crafted. This will enable you to get higher tier items and unlock even further recipes. As you can see, to unlock the shovel, you don't simply just go ahead and scan fibre, you need to scan woven fibre to unlock the shovel recipe. The first three things you want to analyse are sap, as this is going to give you access to a workbench as well as some lights, but it's the workbench that you really want to get unlocked. Also note blades of grass will also unlock the workbench too. And then after that you want to make sure you're analysing plant fibre as this is going to give you woven fibre which you can make anytime and it's useful for a bunch of recipes. And then third on your list is pebbles. This is going to give you access to the tools you need like the pebblet axe which is crucial to get all the other stuff quickly. After that it doesn't really matter what you scan next. You probably won't have that much time to go ahead and unlock a bunch of the stuff. Also worth pointing out as well that there's analyzers scattered all around the map. So the very first one that you come across, don't worry if you want to go and exploring, you will find others. If you've got to the great big wooden fence and the tree, there's one just on the other side of the wooden fence on the corner. If you keep dying from falling from heights, well there is a way to stop that. Go ahead and try and look for dandelions. Make sure you chop it with an axe. and go ahead and look for the tufts that it drops. You'll use the stools for reinforced buildings, but these tufts are super useful for helping you glide out of danger. They'll be automatically equipped, and when you jump from a great height, you'll start using them. But be warned, spiders and other creatures can still jump up and get you. The first time you go inside a drink can, you'll often wonder why they're here, as there's not usually anything there. But normally it takes a little while to build up. So a quick revisit later on and you'll often find some dew inside that will refill your water. You'll often find special dew drops that have got a little bit of juice in around big cartons as well. So always make sure you look underneath anything like this. And that's still not the only liquid you can drink. As well as being able to drink the amber or the nectar, you can also go ahead and drink honeydew drops that you'll find in certain places too. As well as quenching your thirst, they'll also give you a small healing buff as well. I'm pretty sure as well they'll be useful for more advanced recipes to help you heal too. It maybe goes without saying, but try not to drink the dirty water unless you absolutely have to. It will replenish your water, but it does take away some of your health. As you go through the game, you will unlock some blueprints that will allow you to make dewdrop collectors. You just need some spider webs. But don't forget to look up and use pebbles to knock dewdrops down. They'll keep rolling, but there's a quicker way than chopping down the actual branches. If you're having trouble getting the story to progress, don't forget you've got to go down the whole line and take out every single termite if you want to progress it. You can come down this cave pretty much in the dark. You will find these strange glowing tendrils that give off a little bit of light, but it's definitely worth making sure you get a torch before you come and take on this part of the world. Don't forget to also travel up the power line and take out any termites as you will find a couple gnawing away on the cables above ground too. Also, don't forget to fix the next light, which is being blocked by a blade of grass. Make sure you hack away at it, and it should mean that you've got all three lights equipped if you press the switch for the first one, and you can activate the story. There's not much point to the story, though. In the demo, it doesn't really reward you with anything for completing these stages, so I would do other stuff to get you used to the game. 
in the future it will unlock better items and engrams so that you can go to bit revisit some of the areas that maybe you weren't able to get to and it will progress the story but for now it is just a bit useless Now some general tips about how to get lots of resources in one go. Go to head to the acorn and make sure you've got a pebble hammer. When you break it open, you'll have the acorn top, which is useful for making your own crop plots to grow mushrooms, but don't forget to pick up the shell pieces too. These are useful for making water containers, but you'll also find small, small, tiny parts of edible shell that you can actually use to feed yourself too. I found loads of acorns just above the abandoned ant hill towards the northeast section. Inside the big tree you'll find little areas and clumps where there's loads of acorns and you can break them down and obviously get lots of shell. But also you get the acorn bits. This is what you can go ahead and eat. In this same area near the big tree you'll also find clumps of sap. These are a great place to come and get some but you will need a hammer to take care of it and get all the sap that comes loose. Near the big wooden fence where you'll often find lots of wolf spiders, it is a bit dangerous. Underneath the fence you'll find great big massive clumps of fibre. This is a great source to get a bunch of it. Just don't stick around too long or you will have a spider surprising you. The hammer's really super useful so make sure you craft one early and can use it to even get a big bunch of little pebbles when you go ahead and attack one of the big ones. Don't forget as well that you can swim in deeper water. The reason you're going to be going underneath is there's lots of resources, but a big one, especially to the east of the map, is lots of clay. So it's a good spot to get it, but you don't necessarily need clay for the beta, but definitely in the future it's worth noting. Again, the shovel can be unlocked by analysing woven fibre. You'll also unlock the sprig bow and eye patch. Cosmetic items or pieces of armour and accessories can give you buffs in terms of speed, melee damage and health as well. When eating mushrooms, try not to wolf them down all in one go. Although notice whether or not it's a bug that if you eat them too quickly, it doesn't actually fill your food bar up completely. In fact, you're better off eating one, waiting for the food bar to go up a little bit and then go ahead and munch on the rest. Of course, whenever you can, make sure you cook your food and make some of the recipes as this is going to give you much better buffs. Absolutely make sure you kill everything in the game the first chance you get. Obviously some of the bigger bugs you're not going to be able to handle unless you get better weapons and better armor or you've got a good strategy that means you can get them from range. But all the small critters, absolutely try and take them on and make sure you pick up their carcasses so you can unlock better blueprints or items. Some of the bugs are pretty useless, they don't do anything other than maybe give you the option to make some stuff versions but most of them do drop certain resources or will allow you to progress by unlocking new things. You can go ahead and try and defend against some of these creatures and if you time it right you can do some Dark Souls style parries but you really have to be super good at it and making sure you're reading exactly when the bugs are attacking and often your weapons just still won't be strong enough. The exception to killing creatures is of course the ants. These guys will leave you alone as long as you don't attack them and there's got some great benefits. When they come up to you go and follow them. They're often hacking away at a creature and eating its remains but they tend to drop all the other stuff. They'll only eat the meat and they'll drop things like gnat fuzz. They also drop other little bits and bobs for you as well so it's definitely worth making sure you don't aggro and attack these guys. You never know what the ant may bring. Although the exception to that is the white ants, they're buggers, make sure you kill them always. Stuff that you should know, the map you can't put waypoints down unless you actually put a waypoint marker and you need to craft these using resources. Your wristwatch which shows you your health state for food, water, stamina is obviously super useful and it's going to be the main way that you check you need food. But there are two ways that you can have it display information. You can have it showing your food and water, you can see in the circles on it there. But if you hold down on the d-pad and toggle it can turn into a clock and this is useful for making sure you're not going to be caught out at night in some dangerous territory or you're making sure you've timed something right if you want to go and analyze stuff. Pressing down on the d-pad is also how you toggle between first person and third person. 
When you pick items up, they often go straight to your hot pouch if there's plenty of space, but your hot pouch has certain slots of certain things, so it can pretty much hold three melee weapons, it can then hold some items of food, and it can also hold one healing item and usually one light giving item. At least I think that's what the light bulb symbol is for. The demo really only gives you a small amount of access to areas and there's still some areas though that are really super dangerous you will not be able to go through unless you've got a mask. Now as I'm aware you need to make the mask out of blue bottles or I think flies. So I haven't come across them just yet but I do know that the stink bug will pretty much kill you if you go near its area. It's pretty much near the great big massive rake. All around that dead grass area as well, you might find some toxic fumes. This is what's gonna kill you. So if you're wondering why you're dying and the screen's going yellow, it's down to the stink bug and the areas around it. So yeah, you won't be able to venture into this area until you've made that gas mask. You will just keep dying as it's way too toxic. Unless you're really super quick. Alongside the big fence post, you're going to find lots of the wolf spiders and spider webs. If you actually get caught in these, it starts alerting the spiders that you're nearby. So it's pretty much an alarm system that you've triggered. The only way to break through is by pressing RT, and by that point, that's when you're going to start triggering spiders. So you've pretty much got to activate it and then run away as quick as possible. As long as you're a bit quick, you should be able to outrun most spiders, but some of the other bugs are just simply too quick. Especially jumping over chasms, that's a good way to get away from them. Spears are going to be some of the best way to try and take out some of these guys from range, but you're going to have to craft quite a few. Rocks and pebbles are pretty useless. It only takes like a tiny amount of damage from most of these bigger creatures. So don't even bother. Just try and avoid them when you come across them. And that is pretty much it for my top little tips about the beta for Grounded. Of course, I've got more guides to come and they'll put you on the right path when Grounded comes out for full release. So make sure you go and check out them videos. And if you want the best in survival games on console, I am your man. I cover every single brand new survival game coming to console and the brand new ones that are coming out on PC as well with guides, tutorials and news. So make sure you subscribe, make sure you've got the notification bell ticked on and I'll see you rat bags in Grounded soon.